in a permanent magnet, we would find that each atom is oscillating in unison. The reason for the oscillation in this magnet is a nickel atom at the center position of the lattice. The nickel atom is slightly heavier than the iron atom and acts like a pendulum by adding a minute amount of energy to the lattice on each oscillation. This diagram shows that the inline oscillating iron atoms generate a positive gravity displacement wave to the right, or the plus end, as it impacts VS1s in the surrounding matrix, and a gravity displacement wave to the left, or the minus end of the magnet. Both waves are generated by the VS1 surrounding all nuclei in the iron atoms of the magnet by moving quons at the center of each quark. Only quons and interference waypoints, generated by two waves crossing, can move VS1s in the cosmic matrix, quantum vacuum. Every iron atom in the magnet generates a gravity displacement wave on each oscillation out the right end and the left end of the magnet. As the millions and millions of waves move out of the magnet, they cross each other and form millions and millions of interference waypoints along each gravity displacement wave. The cosmic matrix displacement model asserts that there are two variations of gravity. Type 1 is fixed displacement gravity generated by the planets, stars, and galaxies, etc. The enormous mass of atoms concentrated in one place displaces the VS1s of the matrix that fill the universe and is surrounding and through all atomic matter. Any matter that is in the vector lines of force is pushed towards the center of the larger mass, such as the center of the Earth. Type 2 displacement gravity is pulse wave gravity. This type of gravity is generated by quons at the center of quarks and oscillating atoms in magnets. Electromagnetic waves, or light waves, are generated by any motion in the VS1s of the cosmic matrix. VS1s transfer 100% of their motion energy from VS1 to VS1 in a spherical wave shape, or in segments of VS1 waves like neutrinos, free electrons, neutropions, positrons, etc., all of which I don't have time to elaborate on here. This diagram shows a magnet generating pulse gravity waves out the south pole and the north pole of the magnet. A round steel ball is located in the vector lines of force generated by rebounding VS1s of the cosmic matrix. When the magnet interference waypoints pass through the steel ball, they move the quons at the center of each quark in the proton of the iron atom nuclei in phase with the magnet iron atoms. As each wave passes through the ball, there are more VS1s impacting on the back of the ball atom quons than on the front facing the magnet. Each time the waves from the magnet pass through the steel ball atoms, the ball is moved towards the magnet. Each time the waves from the steel ball pass through the magnet, the magnet atoms are moved towards the steel ball. This process is repeated each time the pulse gravity waves pass through the ball or the magnet until the ball touches the magnet. When you take the steel ball away from the magnet, the ball atoms stop oscillating and no longer produce pulse gravity waves. The ball is no longer magnetized. Now that the cosmic matrix displacement model has demonstrated a possible causality for gravity, we are able to propose an experiment for artificial gravity using the precepts of the strong displacement gravity force. The CMD model asserts that if a small superdense spinning disk is spun with angular momentum sufficient to displace VS1s or vortosphere ones of the quantum vacuum, it may be possible to generate an artificial gravity field above the spinning disk. The CMD model for artificial gravity is called SCAPE. S-C-A-P-E. The letters stand for space, curviform amplification by particle exoration. Exoration is the act of plowing. This diagram is the key to designing an artificial gravity generator prototype. It shows a rapidly spinning disk of atoms that is displacing VS1s in the cosmic matrix. When VS1s are displaced, there are vector lines of force that form around the disk. The intensity of the vector lines of force depends upon the velocity, density, and distribution of atoms inside the rotating disk. In this diagram, 
there is more atom mass in the rim of the disk that is revolving at the highest velocity and as a result creates very strong vector lines of force in the VS1s. That is to say there are more VS1s rebounding along the vector lines than rebounding randomly. Any atom object located in the curved region of cosmic matrix will be moved in the direction of the curvature or towards the focal point of the vector lines of force as an example the center of the Earth. The inward gravity field is located around the rim of the disk and I've discovered that as the disk is spun up in RPM, the inward gravity field gets stronger and stronger and gradually overcomes the centrifugal force of the spinning disk. Surprisingly, the increasing inward gravitational force may allow the velocity of the disk to be increased. In the top center region of the spinning disk, there is an area that is labeled lifting area of the disk. You can see that the vector lines of force shown as arrows start to point out from the surface of the disk. This area is where the transition takes place from inward gravity force on the rim of the disk to outward gravity force in the dished area of the disk. The center of the disk is spinning more slowly than the outer rim but still displaces VS1s. The vector lines of force are concave like the inner surface of a sphere and this generates VS1 forces that move any atom mass outward from the disk, thereby creating artificial gravity that not only nullifies the Earth gravity, but also creates an outward gravitational force by positioning a heavy mass of atoms above the spinning disk, outside the vacuum chamber, and attached to the chamber, the atom mass will fall up in the negative gravity field, lifting the vacuum chamber upward and away from the Earth's surface. I agree completely with this final quote from Einstein that states, I have deep faith that the principle of the universe will be beautiful and simple. In closing, I would like to say, the cosmic matrix displacement model asserts that displacement gravity is the only force in the universe. It does not matter whether my concept for gravity is proven right or wrong. What matters is that I impress upon you one final thought. It is imperative that we thoroughly explore the potential of artificial gravity as vigorously as we did for the Manhattan Project because if we don't, some other wannabe superpower or radical group will. And they will have the same advantage over us that we had over the Axis powers that led to their unconditional surrender. I pray that our failure to quickly develop a successful artificial gravity program does not someday result in our unconditional surrender. Thank you very much.